Okay, so our agenda today is first we're going to talk about why to use subqueries at all and kind of the nesting component and property that exists within subqueries inside your query. The subquery navigation in a BAQ, because we are going to be doing that within BAQs, um, the subquery list page, as well as the subquery details slide out panel. So there's two places that you can kind of adjust your queries. And we'll talk about that later. Different subquery types. So there are different types. There's the top level inner subquery, union, union all, intersect, except NCT is also a type of subquery, although it's a specific example that we'll, we will go over. And then we'll talk about CTEs. Um, the basic kind and the recursive kind. So first of all, why do you want to break your query into smaller pieces? So the idea is it's like answering a sw small question inside of a big question. You get something answered as a little piece first, and then you can add that to the bigger puzzle. Um, it makes it easier for debugging. You can make any subquery into the top level query and then just run the results for that. So it makes um, when your entire query doesn't work, it can make just taking pieces of it a little easier. It also can take complex logic and cut it up into clear steps. So when you're looking at that query phrase, or if you're looking at your query in general, you can say like, okay, this piece does this, this piece does this, and you can name it that way as well to give yourself breadcrumbs later. Also, if you need to like group, filter, or calculate data before linking it to other uh, tables or subqueries and CTEs, so if you have like parent tables like employee, and you need to link it to things like what that employee did in labor detail. Uh, you might want to group it, filter it, calculate it first so that there's just one line of data uh, per employee. Makes things easier. You can also avoid duplicates set, um, in your result sets that way. So there's lots and lots of ways and reasons to use it. Okay, so let's first talk about the subquery list tab. So this is specifically something within your BAQ, and you can find it here. I also pulled up my BAQ so that we can look at it a little bit. So if you uh, press on this, here's your traditional BAQ with all of your fun little um, options here. If you go to the overflow on any of the tabs within your BAQ, you can go to subqueries, and that will pull up your subquery list. So that's what you can see here. That down a little bit. Okay, so you can see your subquery list um, here as well as how to get to it. The subquery list has a number of different fields on it. It's ordered by the sequence number, and it does matter in certain cases, not in, but not in all. For unions, accept and intersects, it definitely does because it will union or intersect or accept with the query above it. So you can move them up and down with the arrows. There's arrows right here. So um, if you need them to be in a different order, you can do it that way. There's also an option to add a left and right parentheses. You can do this if you have a whole bunch of subqueries and you have a union and then a union all, you might want to have those union alls together so that it doesn't interfere with another query you have somewhere else type that would be right here so we're going to talk about type a little bit later but that's where you choose if it's a top level if it's a ct if it's a subquery things like that you can choose it here or later in subquery details we'll show you you can change it there as well you can click show details as well which is this one here and then it will pop open um, you can click show details and it will pop up the subquery details screen which we will go to next Okay, so the subquery details tab, this one has a number of different options on it, and it's based on whatever query is selected at the time. So you have the name of the query, which you can change at any point, unless it's referenced, I believe. And then you can do result set, uh, set rows, which is this option right here. Uh, that's going to be, if you ever have done SQL, that's your select modifier. So the options are all, which will just return all your rows, distinct, which will remove any duplicate rows. So if everything from the selected columns is the same in two rows, it will just they give you back one row. Top uh, will only return the rows defined in the top clause. And then we'll talk about the top clause down here. Uh, make sure you have a sort order on a top. You need to have one. They won't let you. You'll get an error if you don't. Plus, you want to know what's actually valued at top. So if you have no sort order, you, if it's like the top sales, top 10 sales, actually want it to be sorted on sales. Otherwise, that top will not have any value. Oh, also, this top can't be combined with offset fetch. So um, we'll talk about the top clause. So it's only available on top or top distinct top. So this will be grayed out. This uh, top clause will be grayed out unless you have top uh, selected. 
um, the rows number or percentage define it in subquery options. So rows number right here is either a number of rows or it's going to be a percentage if you cho choose in percent. So it'd be either 10 rows or 10% of the output of rows, the top 10% of the output of rows. With ties, this specifically means that out of that sort order, if you say top 10, that 10th row, whatever that last row is, um, if that value that created it, the 10th row, so if you sort by like sales, that would be sales. Um, if that value of that 10th sale has any other sales that are exactly the same amount, um, it'll include any other rows with that exact same amount. So it's like we're tied for 10th, uh, it's gonna include anything that ties. Okay, and then order by offset fetch. This can't be used with the top, the offset fetch. Um, so essentially it's like skip this many rows, give me the next this many rows. It can be good uh, for like search results if you're setting up something of that nature, a dashboard that has like search results. Okay, let's go to the next thing. Okay, so these are the types of subqueries in BAQs. Um, there's the top level, the union, the union all, the intersect, the accept, the inner subquery, and the CTE. So we'll talk about TTEs next, but um, the rest of these um, we'll talk about now. So with the top level, you can only have one top level. Um, you need to have at least one top level or you will have no results. Um, your result set is based on your top level. So um, your top level is what you bring everything into. So if you have a union, you need to have a union with the top level. If you have an intersect, you have to have an intersect with the top level. Um, Whatever you, if you have an inner subquery, you need to have a top level where you pull that in and then have output for that. Uh, you, but here's a tip you can make any of your, you can change these uh, types at any time. It doesn't lock it down at any point. So you can change a, if you wanted, if you had a union, you can change your union into a top level just to see what that specific query's output is. Uh, you can change an inner subquery to a top level for just testing to see what specifically just that subquery is is outputting. You need, then you change it back before you want it um, reintegrated into the entire uh, query. So that top level can be really helpful, and you can switch it at, at any point. Union um, unions are uh, Essentially, you're going to take two uh, tables and you are going to merge them. So only for union specifically, only distinct values are kept. Union all, they'll keep the duplicates. You need to have, so specifically with unions, you'll get a lot of errors on these. You need to have the exact same number of columns in both. You need to have the exact same data types in both. Uh, so you'll have five fields in one. You need five fields in the next. If you have uh, data or date as the second one, a date needs to be the second one in the next. Um, since it is merging those together as one field, uh, it needs to be the correct data and it needs to be the correct uh, in the correct order. And we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you a union. Uh, so you can see um, it. the union is always going to union with the query above it. Okay, so um, as is intersect and accept. So that's when the row order matters. An intersect, it only returns the rows matched by all queries. So only ones, if you find a, a match in the other ones, um, if, so like if it, a row exists only in one query and not in the other, it will be om omitted from the results. Um, the except is the opposite of that. Um, it only will show those rows that intersects would have deleted. So um, it returns the distinct rows from the left, which have no matches in the right query. Okay, and then um, inner subquery acts like a table that can be joined to any other subquery via the query diagram. So um, an inner subquery, so if you see here, I had to add in a, a subquery, but this one's a CTE, but you can do it with a um, CTE or an inner subquery, they will show up. So if you have a subquery that will show up inside of another query, you go to subqueries here and it'll show you all your available subqueries that you can pull into this query diagram and join. So, and I'm going to talk a little about uh, the difference between an inner subquery versus a CTE, because it's a, it's a lot different when you do SQL. It's a little less different if you're not doing recursive in a BAQ. Okay, so let's talk about basic CTEs. And there's not in 
BAQs, there's not a huge difference between just basic CTs, not recursive CTs, but basic CTs. Um, and in that, they both really return the same output. And I won't go into all the data stuff, but so um, you can see here, the CTE can be used multiple times when a inner subquery can only be once. So once you create an inner subquery, which you can see here, this is inner subquery versus a CTE. And the thing I'm showing you right now is if you go here, your query phrase, after you make your BAQ, what you're essentially building is this query phrase here. And it's going to be your entire, everything you've done inside of your BAQ is going to be um, written in this. And this is essentially SQL, although it's a little different. So um, it's good to see your overall build sometimes check there. But the way it looks when it's an inner subquery is that it's inside of your overall query. So your from is going to be inside. It's a little bit harder to read. You can see it's this entire area. Um, but it's hard to tell that it's separate from your main query. In a CTE, you're going to get this little width and then a name of it, and then it's going to be segregated at, on, on the top. All CTEs are always going to be at the top. And then down here, you can say from employee of the year, and that's referencing your CTE. So it's sometimes a little bit easier to read, although the output for both of these is going to be exactly the same. It's just written a little bit differently. So it's a little tiny query inside a um, bigger query. This one, I'm actually just pulling out the field from the query, but you could like also join this. Both of these could be joined easily without a problem. Okay, so it's essentially like a temporary helper that um, can make the whole thing like easier to read and easier to manage. You could also name these things, certain stuff like calculating this, and then you can look back at your query and be like, oh, these are my pieces and part that's doing this, that's doing this. Okay, so CTEs, recursive. So we're gonna talk about recursive and this is a little scary for people, but hang in with me. I got lots of examples and lots of visuals. So a recursive CTE is a smart loop inside your query. So a BAQ is essentially writing in SQL. The same CT, you can use those in both SQL and BAQs. Um, it's useful when you need to deal with the data that has hierarchy or steps that build on each other, like a family tree, so like parents, children, grandchildren, uh, company org chart, managers, employees, subordinates, and then the bill of materials, which we're gonna show in a second. The way it works is that there's two parts. There's an anchor query and a recursive query. And um, the anchor query is the starting point, And then the recursion refers back to the anchor to build the next level. So it, if you think about it, it's kind of like if you have um, a folder with a subfolder structure, like most people do within their company, they might have a whole bunch of folders. So there might be like a master folder and then there's like five folders within that master folder. And then each of those five subfolders have documents inside of those. So it's going through and seeing, okay, here is one folder. We're going to open that one up and see if there's any other children that are attached to that folder. Oh, there's another folder attached to that folder. Oh, now there's files attached to that subfolder. So it kind of is going through each level and seeing if there's any children, any children, any children. Now let's go out, let's go into design. <laughs> okay, so this, just so you know, this is a bill of materials, but this is not accurate. I would not actually do this as a bill of material. You need a lot more information, like you need the part table for true finished part stuff. You need the plant, you need phantom bomb, you need alt method, current rev. You might need other things for the way your process works. So please don't actually use this as like a full finished bomb. Uh, there's, it actually is like a whole bunch of pages if you're gonna create a full correct bomb. But just so you can see sort of how that leveling works, um, I wrote out this um, query itself and that's through a BAQ and I'll show you the queries in a second. But first you can see this output and I want you to see what it's doing. Um, this is only one table. So this is the material part or the part material table and you can see I'm, I'm pulling it twice. So I'm pulling it for the anchor and then I'm pulling it again for the recursive part. So all I'm looking at is the part material table. And in that, that part material table has something called part which is actually the parent part and then it has material part which is the unique item per row. So there's only gonna be certain 
material parts. So if you see here, I set this query up and you'll see this is the top level. The finished part is going to be this guy and you can see it's consistent through all of these. And then um, the parent is going to be the fi finishing for the first level. And here are all of the materials that go into that first level. Then you go down to the next level and all of the, any of these that have materials that make them up are going to be down here as parents. So let's find MRP002. So there, it's here a couple times because there's a couple uh, materials that make it up. So you can see CAT 300 SCRS. So then if CAT 300 SCRS has any materials that make it up, we're going to go down to level three. So let's see, CAT 300 SCRS is here. Oh, the BSCRRD 150 makes up that one. Okay, if the BR the BSCRRD 150 has any uh, materials that make that up, it would go down another level. Oh, it looks like there isn't. So um, we've exhausted that one out. But if you, you know, go down through that level with each one of them, you'll find dunk, 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 essentially. And you can see those levels, one, two, three, four. The way that we build that is first we have this anchor. Then we pull in a recursion, which is essentially the same table. Um, but we're going to join it with that CTE anchor. And then we're going to have a, I'd say parent child, but it's more um, one level to another level uh, match so that you know um, how to recur through the different levels. Um, and then you're also with that anchor going to put some of the anchor fields in and the rest are going to come from the recursive part. And then at the end, you're going to have a top level. So this is my top level. Um, you're going to pull that anchor one more time, and it's going to know about this join because we have a union all. Um, so you're going to pull that anchor one more time, and you're going to pull out all of those same fields from the anchor. And then you're going to end up with this output. So let me show you how that works in your actual subquery. So you'll have one, two, three. It needs to be in this order because the union all has to have the CTE above it, and the top level needs to be last for this one. You can see one is the anchor. All I did was pull in the part material table with those fields. And I pulled in specifically these fields with one that was calculated so that we can add one for the level each time. So I just put in a one for that. Um, I also put in the uh, I think part number twice because if it's a parent, if it's the final parent, it's the um, finished part. Then you can see two, this is the second query I created you put in that part material table again, and then you use your little subquery things, you pull in that anchor, that CTE query, and then you join it, and you can see my join here, part num to material part number in the anchor. You also have to join on company and revision number, and there might be a couple other things if you were actually doing it right, but we're not focusing on that today. <laughs> and so um, that's gonna be your union all. And you're going to set that type to union all. You can see that here. And then that's going to make up this recursive part. So that query is this recursive part right here. And then finally, you're going to do your um, output. So this is going to be your top level. So I pulled in that anchor one more time. And it says, hey, you already used this table once. Do you want to name it something different? So I said, oh, let's name it bomb output so it's easier to read. Um, I also named it bomb on my top level so that I know what subquery I am working with that has the top level output. And you can see that part right here. And all I'm doing is pulling that anchor in again and I'm pulling all of those fields. That's essentially how you're gonna create a recursive query.